and I called it forgiveness then, but I'm going to call it acceptance now. And it is to completely accept yourself exactly where you're at and how you are. Because non-acceptance is that veil that will make you feel like something stands in between you and God, you and Source, you and love, you and infinity. And it's not true. There's nothing in between you and you. <laughs> no, how could there be? You are God. How could there be anything in between God and God? Nothing can be in between you and you. So it's an illusion. It's a mental illusion. It's a veil. And it creates all the suffering and it creates all the drama and it creates all the stress and it creates all the anxiety, it creates all the fear. So I need you to accept yourself completely, right? I need you to completely accept yourself as you are. God needs you to completely accept yourself as you are. And don't worry if you can't do it all the way. God's still going to love you unconditionally. And there's other ways. There's other hacks. Okay. God's love is always accessible. This is one of the laws. God is accessible. That's one of the primary laws. No matter what's going on. Okay. God's love is accessible. No matter what's going on for you. So even in your most blinded, contracted, self-detrimental state, self-judgmental states of consciousness, God's love is still somehow accessible to you. And I hope through the different means of how we're going to be approaching this weekend that you'll be able to have some of these tools in your toolkit to recognize God's love no matter what's going on for you. But it, it would be immensely helpful, nevertheless. It would streamline the whole experience for you. It would open that aperture by a lot and make it easier for you to recognize God's love if you just radically decide to be done with not accepting yourself as you are, as you are, as you are. Not once you recognize God's love, <laughs> like two days from now, maybe. No, right now, as you are, with all your flaws, all your emotions, all your reactions, all the things you've done wrong in your life and or perceive that you did wrong, to completely and radically accept yourself as you are. It's, uh, it's one of the most profound prerequisites or initial steps that we can take to opening ourselves to that automatic love. Because it's hard to open up to automatic love if, if you're not allowing that in for yourself. If you insist as a personal, egoic, conscious mind, if you continue to insist that you're not good enough, that you're not capable, that you did something wrong, that you're not there yet, that you're not perfect, all these things, please, I need you to let them go as much as you can. If you can't let them go, don't start judging yourself about that. Accept that too. If you can't accept yourself, then accept the fact that you cannot accept yourself. Start there. So you always accept whatever is right now. So if non-acceptance is what is right now, then what would love do? What would God's love do? God's love would accept non-acceptance. It's only the human mind that thinks God's love looks lovingly and it doesn't look like hatred or that it looks kind and it never looks evil or, or bad. It, those are those human concepts, and we'll get more into that tomorrow, how the biases are in the way. But what's most important for your energetic system, for your individual mind, body, spirit alignment, your energy centers, if you will, what's very helpful to sort of open that up is to start with an acceptance of exactly this moment, how you are in this moment, exactly as you are, including your resistance and non-acceptance. So it's like... <clears throat> Something's going on in your life. Let's say it's over here and it's kind of like in front of you. It's your emotions, it's your thoughts, it's your neighbors, it's whatever is happening, your relationship with your parents or the friends that just got disturbed. So something is happening over here in front of your vision, right? Most of the things that we perceive, we could say, oh, they're kind of happening in front of my mind. They're kind of happening in front of my consciousness. I can see them. I can feel them. I can perceive them in front of me. And now I'm asking you to accept that. Hmm? But that's not really what I'm asking you to do. It seems that that's what I'm asking you to do, but it's not. I'm asking you to, in a sense, take a step back further and accept the one who's seeing this. So here's the stuff. And it may look like I'm asking you to accept your neighbors and accept your emotions and that. And that's great if you can. But I'm really asking you to step back over here and accept this one, unable to accept that. To accept this one that's having these emotions. To accept this one that doesn't like their neighbors. So it's, or sometimes I've called it quantum acceptance. It's to align with the acceptance of God, which is an acceptance that's always already implicit. It's inherent in every moment. It's the fabric of your experience. There couldn't be a single thing that happens to you, through you, from you, by you, that's not 100% accepted and bathed in God's love. And I want you to experience this. 
And some people fear that they'll become really bad people. Then it's farthest from the truth. Nobody who's gotten access to God's love has become a worse person for it. Nobody, nobody ever in the history of this universe. The opposite is a fact, a metaphysical truth. The only thing that produces evil is obscuration. It is cloudedness. It is the veiling. Okay. God's love liberates. And yes, it liberates us from biases such as good and evil, uh, nice and not nice, and all these sort of polar opposites. It transcends that. So yeah, you do become dangerous in that sense to concepts. You become dangerous to taboos. You become, you become ingraspable. You cannot be boxed in anymore. But no one has ever become a worse person or lost a bit of their honor or integrity by realizing God's love. Those that realize God's love truly experientially have become more precise, more aligned in their honor, in their integrity, in their love. Naturally, that's the only way it can happen. Liberation and freedom leads to good people, to put it very bluntly. Love and liberation leads to good people. Not being free leads to horrors of all different kinds and dramas and ultimately evil. So we got to free ourselves from the taboos of good and evil. Ironically, from those constraints, we have to be free. When we're free, what happens? Love is automatic. When we don't feel free, when we don't allow ourselves to feel free, and acceptance is often the first step to begin to access that infinite freedom. Because that's where our focus is kind of stuck. Our focus gets kind of stuck on not accepting ourselves as we are, having this kind of idea, this distorted, twisted notion that somehow we're not acceptable, we're not lovable, we're not there yet, we're not perfect. And on one level, you could say you're not. And that's fine too, because you're never going to be at that level. Perfect. You're made of flesh, blood, pus, and stink. You know, that's just the nature of it. At that level, you're never going to be perfect. You're always going to be blood, pus, and stink, and bones. And So you get my point, right? On that level, yeah, whatever. But doesn't mean that you, as a being, as an aliveness, as a sentience, as the co-creative spark of the creator, that you are not perfect and perfectly loved. And so in order to access that, to know that freedom freely, a first step often is to accept yourself, which, which means accept yourself also having trouble with the things that happen in your life. Does that make sense? That distinction? So it's not just about like being like happy go la la land with everything that happens in your life. It's not about that. You can dislike certain things. You can have conflict with certain people. You can stand up for yourself. You can whatever. It doesn't have to look spiritual. It doesn't have to look Buddhist, you know? It can look messy. It can look fucking Western fucked up society. It can look like that. It can look like whatever you're conditioned for it to look like. And at the same time, you can accept that too. You can accept the distortion. You can accept the emotion. You can accept the inability to forgive. You can accept the inability to accept and to love. And paradoxically, in accepting yourself, not being able to accept the things in your life, magic happens. The aperture opens. God's love shines through. And suddenly you appreciate everything you don't like, like goat's cheese for me. And it gets worse than that. And of course, there's situations I also don't like that are even worse than goat's cheese, but goat's cheese is pretty close to the top. And I can appreciate never liking goat's cheese and never coming to peas and to terms with goat cheese. And if I accept that completely, I can be in God's love. There's no obstacle to that. I can still not like goat cheese and absolutely have God's love flow through me.